Are you interested in turning fruit and vegetable waste into a soil amendment that works wonders in backyard gardens? Would you like to get the benefits of compost, but don't have the space or materials needed to build a pile? Do you want to do something that keeps organics out of the landfill, but doesn't require constant attention? The solution is vermicomposting, using worms to break down organic waste and in turn harvesting the byproduct for use in gardens. This video class will serve the same purpose as our vermicomposting class and make your own worm bin workshops without ever having to leave the comfort of your home. Of course, if you'd like some hands-on assistance, you can always come to one of our free classes and join in on the fun. This video class will be divided into two main segments, learning about how red wiggler worms turn food scraps into castings and the uses and application options for those castings. Of course, we'll also include some troubleshooting tips. At the end of this lesson, we'll provide a link to the follow-up video, Make Your Own Worm Bin, so you can learn how to assemble your own vermicomposting bin. With that out of the way, let's get started on our vermicomposting journey, a journey that wouldn't be possible without the star of the show, the red wiggler worm. It's the earthworm's smaller cousin, but don't let its size fool you. Red worms can eat half their body weight in food scraps every day. Some other fun facts? These worms do not have eyes. They have cells called cerebral ganglion in the front part of their bodies that can detect light. They have five heart-like organs called aortic arches. Worms breathe through their skin, require a dark, moist environment, but not sopping wet as they can drown. They have no ears, but their bodies can sense vibrations in the soil. Also, they don't have any bones. That's why they're squirmy when they move. Red worms can live up to one year and reproduce in a rather unique way. They're hermaphrodites, but still need another worm to complete the process. They can produce up to two cocoons a week, and each cocoon will contain two to five offspring. One last fact. We mentioned earlier that red wigglers eat half their body weight in food every day. That fact is even more interesting because worms don't have teeth. Instead, they suck decaying food into their mouth and grind the food by using the grit in their gizzard. Because of this, they can only eat food that is started to or is completely decayed. What foods do worms eat? Fruit and vegetable scraps, pasta, bread, cereal, coffee grounds, tea leaves and bags, egg shells, newspaper, paper towels, and napkins. Of note, pasta should be cooked and relatively free of sauce and oil. Cereal should be drained of milk. Coffee grounds should not contain the filter. Egg shells should be finely crushed and use only paper towels and napkins that have been used to wipe up minor food spills, not chemicals. To recap, feel free to feed your worms any of these items. Later on in the video, we'll discuss how often to feed the worms. Just as important, you need to avoid putting these materials in your worm bin. Yard waste like leaves, grass, or twigs. Mixed together, they could cause the bin to heat up and kill the worms. Unwashed fruit and vegetable scraps because pesticides can kill the worms. Citrus and citrus peels. They're simply too acidic for worms to digest. Animal or dairy products such as meat, bones, and milk. These will produce an odor that could attract unwanted pests to the bin. Once more, these items should stay out of your worm bin. By limiting what you put in the bin, you'll have a better chance at preventing problems. Red wiggler worms are used for vermicomposting and adapt well to life in containers called worm bins. These bins can be made of 4-gallon kitty litter containers, 5-gallon food-grade plastic buckets, or 10 to 18-gallon plastic storage bins. The type and size of container that's best for your use will be determined by answering the following. How much space do you have? Do you have any limitations for how much weight you can lift? Do you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables? If you live in an apartment or condominium with limited space, or you have lifting limitations, consider using the kitty litter pails or 5-gallon buckets. If you live in a house and space is not a concern, or you do not have lifting limitations, you might want to consider using the 10 to 18 gallon plastic storage totes. Also, if you do eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, you may want to build more than one bin. We recommend the 10 to 18 gallon plastic storage totes since they allow the worms more room to move around and feed. Whichever option you choose, you'll need two of the same containers with lids to create your worm bin. You'll also want to avoid clear colored bins as they allow too much light in, and worms and light don't mix. We'll go into more detail later in the video, but your worm bin will be filled with a damp bedding to start. This serves two purposes. It gives the worms a moist environment in which to live and reproduce, and it also gives them a backup food source if they consume all of the food scraps. You can use any of the following for your worm bin bedding. You'll need enough to fill a bin half to three quarters full. 
torn newspaper is the most common, but don't use the glossy paper portions that some ads are printed on. You can also use leaf mold, coconut coir fiber, finished compost, or peat moss. Cardboard should be added sparingly and must be ripped into small pieces and soaked in water before entering the bin. In addition, adding a damp newspaper blanket is another great idea to keep your bin in working order. It will act as an air conditioner of sorts, providing moisture and keeping the temperature down, especially important during the summer months. Speaking of the summer, redworms can tolerate a wide range of temperatures, but prefer temperatures between 55 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that worm bins should be kept in a shady location at all times. The bins need good air circulation because without it, they could become very wet. The bin should be monitored closely to ensure that it's not too dry or too wet and that there's enough food. Feeding your worms is easy. One big hint? Try to space out where you place the food. If you choose a plastic storage container, you can break the bin down into six or eight feeding zones and place the food waste in a different zone each time. By the time you get to the last number, number one should have fully been consumed by the worms, allowing you to start all over. How much and how often you feed your worms will vary. To start, shoot for once a week and note if there are any food scraps remaining the next week. If there are lots, hold off on adding new ones. After two to four months, you'll likely have enough castings to harvest. Harvesting will take some time and some patience, so heading outside on a sunny day is a great way to harvest. Use your hands to gently amass a pile of castings, separating worms as you find them. Isolate that pile near a light source, which will encourage hidden worms to move away from the light. You'll continue to separate castings from the worms. The bright light will prompt the worms to move to the middle of the mound, meaning you'll be able to keep pulling castings from the pile. Once you're done, you should have a pile of castings and a mass of worms. The worms will go back into the bin with fresh bedding to start the vermicomposting process all over again. Meanwhile, you can use the castings for a variety of soil amendments that are sure to make your yard or garden look its best. One easy way is to simply sprinkle castings on as a top layer. Alternatively, you can mix them with potting soil. If you're planting a fall or spring garden, when setting seedlings into the soil, dig out the area a little deeper and toss in a handful of castings. Put a thin layer of dirt over them and then put the seedlings in. As the plant grows, its roots will be able to reach the castings and provide the plant with nutrients to grow bigger and better than before. Worm castings can also be used to make liquid soil amendments. Collect castings in a cheesecloth or old pillowcase and make worm tea by steeping it in water for a few days. Then use the liquid to water plants like normal. Plus, you can utilize the leachate drippings in the bottom of your bin. Over time, liquids from the worm composting process will filter through the holes in the bottom of your top container and into your bottom container. While you're looking at the bottom bin, fish out any fugitive worms that have escaped and put them back into the main bin. They'd thank you if they could. Now back to the subject at hand. This liquid is just as beneficial as worm castings. In fact, it's so good, it should be diluted to avoid burning plants. Combine one part leachate with four or five parts of water, and you've got a great liquid soil amendment. With all that information, you should be well on your way to becoming a top-notch vermicomposter. But sometimes problems can arise many of which can be easily corrected with a few simple changes. Here are a few troubleshooting tips. If your worms are drying out and dying, make sure there's enough moisture in the container. Use a spray bottle to moisten the newspaper blanket every so often, perhaps weekly during the Riverside County summer. On the other hand, there can be too much moisture as well. One easy way to tell is by noting if there's condensation present on the lid of the container. If so, cut a hole in the lid and add screening to it to increase airflow. If you're seeing flies or other organisms beside worms in your bin, try freezing your fruit and vegetable scraps before putting them in the bin. This is a two-part benefit. It kills the insect larvae and also helps the organics to break down, meaning the worms will be able to consume them faster. If the problem persists, consider leaving banana peels out of the bins. Those seem to cause the most trouble by attracting pests. Lastly, there shouldn't be an odor associated with your container. If there is, make sure you're not including any meat or dairy products, and make sure to wash pasta and cereal if you add those to the bin. Additionally, examine how much food is being consumed by the worms. You may be adding too much food too often. Either reduce the amount of food you're depositing, or build another worm bin. Now that you know the basics of vermicomposting, we hope you'll put red worms to work on your organic waste, and help out your yard or garden at the same time. If you would like to learn how to make your own worm bin, you can click on the accompanying video seen on the screen right now.